Kad možemo, da očekujemo nešto slično kad se radi o Romima u Hrvatskoj? Da li može nešto slično da se objavi o Romima, da se desilo, na primjer, u toku drugog svjetskog razvoja, jasno od mojega? Pa svi su uključeni, vi znate da i romska zajednica je vrlo aktivna i da mi snažno podržavamo, naravno, i kao manjinu u Hrvatskom saboru imate i predstavnika, tako da je u interesu zapravo Hrvatskog društva imati građane, bez ozora njihov, kako se oni sjećaju, njihov identiteta, da svi uživaju jednaka građanska prava, vrijednosti, evropske vrijednosti za koje smo se svi zajedno predijelili. Jer nama je u interesu da u Hrvatskoj svi se osjećaju dobro i zadovoljno. Je li ima edukaciju školi, što se radi, što su istorija u ovom izgledu? Da, da, naravno, naravno, sve ono što je zapravo što je...
Är vi på svenska eller? Svenska, nej. Rabbi Baker, please. Uh, this is the Swedish media, so I will speak in Swedish. Det här, jag är här i egenskap av ordförande för oss, Organisationen för säkerhet och samarbete i Europa. Min delegation innehåller också Rabbi Andrew Baker som är särskilda sändebudet mot antisemitism inom oss. Vårt första möte inom oss var en expertmöte mot antisemitism men också mot intolerans och mot rasism. Och jag och Rabbi Eivor Baker kommer att ha ett gemensamt tal här under dagen. Maybe Rabbi, you would like to say a few words to the Swedish media? Sure. On the OSCE work and your work. The OSCE has been taking on the challenge of combating anti-Semitism as the first international organization to mount a conference focused just on that problem back in 2003. And in the years since, it has really moved to engage all of its members to accept and live up to commitments to confront this problem in collecting data on hate crime, in developing educational programs and really bolstering the security needs of Jewish communities that in many countries are under physical threat. And during this year, uh, as Sweden has chaired the OSCE, it began the year really with an important expert uh, level conference in the first days of February to lay out many of these problems that are still with us and it is fitting in a way that as the year is drawing to an end to be gathered here in Malmo under the auspices of your Prime Minister uh, again to reiterate all of these problems but really to draw from individual governments strong and significant pledges of commitments of things to do going forward. Uh, to the Swedish News Agency here, uh, Mr. Baker. közösségek élnek Európa sok országában, és egy olyan erőforrást jelentenek számunkra, amelyre támaszkodnunk kell és érdemes. 
és hogy a roma kultúra az olyan gazdagságot tud jelenteni nekünk európaiaknak, amelyből mindannyian meríthetünk. Mi magyarok ebben azért is tudunk jó példát mutatni a többieknek, mert Magyarországon együtt élünk évszázadok óta a cigány testvéreinkkel, Éppen ezért mi tudjuk azt, hogy mit jelent egy roma-nem-roma roma együttélés. És Magyarországon is elég sokat teszünk azért, hogy a cigány ellenesség az ne az, legyen jelen. Tesz Például az, hogy a, az, az oktatás szerintem az egyik legfontosabb terület. Például az, hogy a Nemzeti Alaptantervünkben menne van a roma történelemnek és kultúrának a tanítása, az nem csak a roma gyerekeknek fontos, hanem a nem roma társaiknak is, hogy tudják azt, hogy milyen sok gazdagságot jelentett az, hogy mi együtt élünk, és hogy milyen régóta élünk mi együtt. Vagy az, hogy olyan roma felszálkozási programok vannak. programokat, amelyek kifejezetten arról szólnak, hogy tehet, te, tekintsünk a magyarországi cigány emberekre olyan erőforrásként, amire érdemes támaszkodni. A holokausz, nem a holokausz, a mondjuk a fókusz az a... témává tette 2011-ben, az is arról szólt, hogy európai szinten is beszéljünk erről. Mi Magyarországon minden évben megemlékezünk a roma holokauszról is, és erről szó van az iskolákban, és szó van a közéletben is. Tehát minden évben emlékeztetünk arra, hogy a roma holokauszt és az emlékezés kultúrának a része egy fontos rész. Miniszter asszony, az antiszemitizmussal kapcsolatban milyen vállalásokat fog tenni Magyarország? Tud erről valamit mondani? Az antiszemitizmus az egy olyan fenyegetés, amely most is jelen van az életünkben. A holokausztra emlékeznünk kell, a holokausztot nem felejthetjük el, és nem történhet meg soha többet. Az antiszemitizmus viszont nem valami olyasmi, amit hogyha egyszer leküzdöttünk, akkor utána végérvényesen leszámoltunk vele. Ezért is kell minden esetben zéró toleranciát érdeklünk. Azzal, hogy olyan embereket nevez ki, mint Takaró Mihály, a Nemzeti Alaptanter felügyeletére, vagy Rutna Jelnőt tünteti ki, aki összeesküvés elméleteket van. Mi a véleménye előtt? Hogyha ott tartunk, hogy a tankönyvekben, tananyagainkban milyen tartalom szerepel ebben a Okay. Uh, 
Tehát ami fenyegetős, ami szerintem aggasztó az az, hogy minden nemzetközi visszak nélkül jelenleg arra készül az Egyesült Ellenzék Magyarországon, hogy a nyíltan antiszemita politikai pártnak a képviselői kormányzati pozícióba üljenek. Tehát én szerintem azon érdemes elgondolkodni a zsidó közösség és a nem zsidó közösség tagjainak is Magyarországon is világszerte, hogy nem aggasztó e az a veszély, hogy lehetséges, hogy az ügyet belül miniszter Magyarországon egy antiszemita pártnak a vezető. Igen, igen, de a kormánynak nem kéne előjárni például, például olyan szempontból, hogy tényleg zéró tolenciát mutatott antiszemítszer. Nálunk ez a fenyegető jelenség, ez nincsen jelen. Éppen azért is, mert védjük a határainkat, és éppen azért is, mert határozottan kivontuk, hogy nem tudunk szeretetkezni az illegális bevándorlásnak, és nem is a bevándorlásban látjuk a megoldást, és ez is elejét veszi annak, hogy muszlim ellenes hangok előre, előre törjenek, vagy erőre törjenek Magyarországon. Tehát Magyarországon jelenleg ezzel a problémával nem kell szembenézni, és azt pedig minden alkalommal határozottan nem csak kimondjuk, de minden eszközzel támogatjuk. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Nachman Shah. I'm a minister on the diaspora affairs from the state of Israel. I would like to thank the Swedish government for extending uh, inv its invitation to come over here. Our president will address the conference very soon. Uh, we certainly attach a lot of importance to such a conference. We want to remember, but we also want the world to react. There is a dangerous rise of anti-Semitism all over the world, including Europe, everywhere, mainly because of uh, the new uh, social uh, uh, media. Uh, they are doing a good job in uh, inciting and uh, increasing the level of hate. And uh, they have to take responsibility for that, not to remain so-called neutral or objective, They are part of the scene. They open the floor for a lot of incitement. Uh, many people, uh, anti-Sema, take advantage and use those platforms now to attack Jews, to attack uh, against xenophobia. And uh, it's time for them to assume their responsibility and to uh, look at what, the, what they are doing on the, on the social media. There's a new democracy here, and we appreciate it very much, but at the same time, we expect them Uh, to control uh, the system. Um, and that's the message we are going to carry in this uh, conference uh, as well. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the government, the prime minister, the foreign minister, and the Sweden, and especially, uh, especially to the uh, Jewish uh, community here in Malmo, which has suffered a lot of anti-Semitism and hate in the past few years. The numbers of Jews living in Malmo dropped from 2,000 to 500, and they keep leaving the city. And uh, the message we are bringing from Israel, the Jews are and should live wherever they want and to proudly, proudly uh, live their own Jewish life, anywhere in the world, anywhere in Sweden, anywhere in Europe. Again, thank you very much and have, have a nice day. Question. Yes, madam. Yes. Yes. It's two groups of uh, people who yeah. get Holocaust. The yes, Jews and, and, and Roma. Yeah, we, we share the same okay. grief with the Roman yeah. people. No okay. doubt about that. Do you pronounce anything for the Roma people who are also part of the Holocaust? I, we, uh, as Jews, we fully understand the, uh, the similar tragedy of uh, the Roma people. Uh, the day before yesterday, I attended the ceremony in, in Bucharest, in the city center of Bucharest. And uh, it was Remembrance Day for the Holocaust and the Roma as well. And we all laid wreaths for the Roma and the Jewish people. And uh, I think that we all have to stand together 
against hate, against xenophobia. Not the, the world will do anything similar of that kind anytime, anywhere in the future. This is the lesson. These are the lessons from the, 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 the war. This is the lesson from the Holocaust. And the world should reiterate those lessons and teach every young man and women what happened and shouldn't let it happen something even of that kind in the future anywhere in the world. Will this conference make any difference? We hope so, yes, we hope so, because the European Union introduced uh, a new uh, strategic plan for the upcoming 10 years. We are very hopeful that the European Union is now committed to take action against anti-Semitism, and uh, hopefully we'll hear more details inside. But yes, there is a new start now, it's a new page, it's a new chapter in combating anti-Semitism, and it starts today in Malmo, in Sweden. How do you view the problems with anti-Semitism in Malmo and Sweden today? Um, I have no um, uh, information of t today or yesterday, but in general, as I said before, there is a rise of anti-Semitism, especially in the past uh, few months. After um, the last military engagement between Israel and the Hamas terror organization in Gaza, we noticed that all over. And as, as I said before, especially in the social uh, media networks, uh, this is an open space and everyone can say and do almost everything they want. We monitor the media, we notice what's going on there. And now the, uh, the responsibility falls on the shoulder of those uh, social media organizations. Uh, you know them all, uh, Facebook and Google and TikTok and, and many others. This is their responsibility. They cannot sit and watch the scene. They should look inside their networks and we, we figure out what's going on and block those messages. That's what we expect them. Clean the messages from those networks. Don't let it pass and don't let it go because it increases more and more the volume of hatred and anti-Semitism against Jews and against Roma and against any strange people anywhere in the world today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you.
Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank the government of Sweden for holding this conference. It's a shame a conference like this has to happen because when people saw what happened after the Second World War with Auschwitz and Dachau and Treblinka, no one wanted to be associated. We are now three generations later and people have forgotten. And what's been happening, the new type of anti-Semitism is anti-Israel, but it's still anti-Semitism. It's coming from the right, but now it comes mainly from the left. And the left is very much people who have come here during the last 10 or 15 years who are bringing their hatred for Israel from the Middle East. I hope this conference finds a way to start working very hard to change things. The key thing is education. What kind of specific commitments would you like to see here today? I like the fact that, number one, the question of education. I feel in Sweden, as well as everywhere else, on January 27th, which is the day that um, Auschwitz was liberated, I feel every school child should understand what happened in the Holocaust and why it happened. Secondly, I feel it's very important that the government, this government and other governments, make a strong statement that hate, um, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-everything has no place in this government, in this, in this country or any other country. Thank you. Mr. Luder, Sweden is one of the countries that is recognizing the ERA definition of uh, anti-Semitism. Yes. And it's been a criticism that this definition uh, labels legitimate criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. What do you make of this debate? <laughs> it's a debate that is ridiculous. And um, frankly, the IRA pre presentation, the IRA definition is so important. And the question of trying to make Israel the only democracy in the Middle East, a place where um, being, being attacked. The question is, what would happen in Sweden if you had 4,000 rockets hitting your country and the people who sent them wanted to kill all Swedes and destroy the country. How would you feel if the world said, ah, it's not, Swe it's not um, th those countries, it's Sweden's fault? Thank you. How do you feel? Thank you, thank you.
Så att de bara kan säga att de bara kan gå. Head of delegation ni går här på blåa övriga på andra sidan. För då går det inte på fel. Nej. Men det är ju smart när man satt på loppen. Ja.
I would like to thank Sweden for the organizing of this conference. It is a very important topic. We should all fight together against racism and anti-Semitism, and today we will discuss this issue. How will Latvia contribute today? Latvia has a lot of measures, or has already done, uh, in order to uh, have a remembrance of uh, Holocaust, which happens also in Latvia, by. German Nazi uh, occupants and we have uh, a small uh, Jewish community which is very active. For example, we have uh, a memory day of Holocaust as a, in, in, a, in our uh, calendar. Uh, I think we have done uh, a lot. We have also a Jewish museum and, and so on and so on. Also, we are uh, very committed to fight anti-Semitism and racism and to keep in the public memory of the Holocaust. It's very important.
Uh, actually, we are expecting to have a very important uh, discussions uh, dealing with uh, the problem we are facing uh, quite a lot uh, in uh, many countries. That is uh, that uh, our wordings to each other have gone to a direction which is uh, ununderstandable and very many nations like Finland has experiences that when the birds get harder then the next step is uh, deeds get harder and that's why it's very important to talk about uh, how we can in a civilized way differ from each other. Thank In what you. way can Finland contribute today? Uh, I, I think that one of the main elements is education. Uh, telling children that uh, we are not different human beings and we have to respect each other even though we uh, think differently of uh, many issues. Uh, I uh, would like to underline also now that we have this uh, intense discussion in social media, the responsibility of those who maintain the possibility of uh, people to react. They should, and I, I mentioned, for example, Facebook, uh, have more responsibility on what happens on their sites. Uh, we elderly people like I remember very well the printed press, how they actually reacted. And the reaction was that the chief editor was irresponsible for everything that is printed in his or her newspaper. And something like that I think we should be able to create. Meidän niin sanottu pledge. Are you going to 
address this uh, questions about responsibility. I have, I have, I have. As I'm Michael Roth, Michael Roth from Germany, and I feel really honored and uh, privileged to represent my country here in Malmö. Um, thanks to our Swedish friends for organizing this international conference to discuss the remembrance of the Holocaust and, um, and the fight uh, against um, anti-Semitism worldwide in Europe, but also in my country. After 25 years after the um, Stockholm Declaration, that's an ideal time to discuss it with friends all over the world. Um, the situation worldwide in Europe, but also in Germany, is extremely worrying. I just want to illustrate it with two examples. The uh, attack um, in the city of Hanau with nine killed persons, a racist attack, a terror attack. Two years ago, um, the attack on uh, a synagogue in the city of Halle with killed people um, during the highest Jewish holiday, uh, Yom Kippur. It was a disaster for all of us. Um, my country is committed to uh, draw up a national strategy against uh, anti-Semitism based on a holistic approach. We have to foster and uh, protect Jewish life in Germany, but also in Europe. And we would like to continue the work of the task force against um, um, Holocaust distortion. Uh, Holocaust distortion was an extremely serious problem uh, during the pandemic. Um, we uh, had to face extremely worrying situations on the streets, also in my country. And it's a special obligation for my country, because of our history, to protect Jewish life, to protect Jews in my country, in Europe and all over the world. There are legal intentions in Sweden to criminalize uh, the denial of the Holocaust. How do you see that? How do you consider that from the German perspective? The Holocaust is a unique um, um, situation and we are all obliged to do our utmost best uh, to, to learn our lessons from the past and to protect Jewish life in our countries. Jewish people are moving to Israel, leaving uh, Germany, Sweden and other European countries. What is your comment on that? Uh, this is a disaster for all of us because um, Jewish life is a crucial part of Europe. It belongs to us. It enriches us. And um, I took notice from the very worrying reports of the European Commission, 38% um, of Jews in Europe considered to leave the European Union because of anti-Semitism and racism. Anti-Semitism is also a problem in Europe. Thank you so much.
ものしたの
Yes, I am representing the European Jewry. I'm a president of European Jewish Congress, Moshe Kenter. I would like to say that this gathering is uh, the most important in the history gathering made by non-Jewish entity, non-Jewish government. And that's why it's so important for us that uh, the problem is recognized properly and managed properly. And I am very grateful to Prime Minister Loven that he did it during the last five years excellently. And just now the organization is perfect and we ha are able to express our um, um, attitude not only to anti-Semitism but extremism in general because they are connected completely. Thank you very much. Will this conference lead to an different situation for Jews in the world? Yes, I think, uh, you know, the added value of this conference is very interesting because for the first time uh, the participants representing different uh, countries are bringing here their pledges, concrete actions, especially Sweden and especially European Union, very important uh, pledges concerning Jewish life, in the countries and Jewish life in uh, European Union in general. And this is extremely important. It's added value and absolutely new step. Okay, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The country that uh, does not remember uh, its history will have to experience it again. Uh, and that goes for also for the continents. And I'm sure we don't want to experience uh, the World War anymore. And uh, therefore, I appreciate that uh, the Prime Minister of Sweden organizes, is organizing this great event. We as a Slovakia have also our own sins from the time of uh, World War II. Eight years ago, the Slovak government adopted a Jewish code against the Jews. And uh, in the occasion of 80th anniversary of this, our government uh, apologized for this sinful act. And uh, I think this is this is the uh, this is the action that we have to do, and we have, have to put a lot of emphasis on also educating our young generation that doesn't experience because the time flies by, and there is not many people who remember that horrible uh, acts that were that happened during the uh, Second World War, and also during the Holocaust. So. Once again, thanks to the Prime Minister for organizing this great event. Thank you. What will Slovakia contribute to it today? Mm -hmm. as, we, as you know, we have, uh, we have a museum of the, of the Holocaust in Sereć that we uh, started to build in the 2016 and we will enlarge it to the full extent and also we will put a lot of effort on educating our youth, our young generation, but not only the young generation, but I think it needs to be not only commemorated and remembered, but also we need to speak on it as, as much as possible. So this will not happen again. Thank you.